What up, y'all? It's boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, October 11th, 2017. Delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Ron Howard has shared on Instagram another unsent image from his upcoming Star Wars standalone film about a young Han Solo. The filmmaker wrote alongside a mysterious image that appeared to resemble an entrance or doorway full of blue lighting. Tough neighborhoods contain doorways to adventure, mystery, and excitement. Hashtag Untitled Han Solo Movie. The onset photo is the latest tease shared by Howard, who previously gave fans a hint that the Kessel Run mentioned through Star Wars Lord would be making an appearance in the film, along with a small taste of how Donald Glover will look as Lando Carizian in the film and a glimpse at a new droid. Howard took over the directing duties on on the film in June in place of filmmaker Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who were booted off the project over different creative visions. The film also stars Aidan Egernwright as Han Solo, along with Amelia Clark, Woody Harrelson, and Tanny Newton. The untitled Han Solo film is set to open in theaters on May 25th, 2018. On Sunday, Howard released a photo of the editing room he uses to work on the film's writing, saying spending more time in the editing room each day now after we wrap shooting. The 63-year-old followed up that tweet by responding to a fan comment about the film perhaps being almost finished. Howard responded, almost finishing shooting, but months of post-production work ahead. Tremendous team, so lots to look forward to creatively. Dwayne Johnson defended his upcoming Fast and Furious spinoff with Jason Stein on Instagram Monday, days after franchise star Tyrese Gibson slammed the actor over the project. Uh, Johnson wrote, quoting his Fast and Furious character Hobbs alongside a video of himself interacting with Stein for the eighth installment in the series, Fate of the Furious, Daddy's Gotta Go Back to Work, Hobbs. He also wrote, pumped to expand and build out the Fast and Furious universe in a cool, exciting way with the at 7 Bucks Pro with writer-producer Chris Morgan, producer Iron Garcia, and lead producer and my big twin Neil Moretz. He continued talking about the studio project. He also added, thank you Universal Studios for being tremendous partners who see the big picture and for coming to us years ago with this spinoff idea. Huge shout out to my brother Jason Steinem for the trust and wanting to create and deliver something fresh and badass for the fans. Johnson also wrote, I have a tremendous amount of respect for this franchise that I enjoyed dropping blood and sweat in over the years, and my vision is to create greater opportunities for not only my fellow FF castmates, but for other amazing actors as well who want to be a part of something new and cool. Um, he also added, uh, possibly alluding to how Gibson is unhappy about the spinoff, let's have some fun and to quote Hobbs the boss, if you don't like it, we're happy to beat that ass like a Cherokee drum. Hashtag Hobbs, hashtag seven bucks prods, hashtag new opportunities, hashtag candy asses need not apply. The Untitled spinoff is set to arrive in theaters on July 26, 2019. Universal recently delayed the release of Fast and Furious 9 by one year to April 10, 2020, something that Gibson blames on Johnson and the spinoff. Gibson wrote, Congratulations to The Rock and your brother-in-law, aka Seven Bucks producing partner Iram Garcia, for making the Fast and the Furious franchise about you. He also added, And like you, DJ, even if they call, I will not be deleting this post. Good night, folks. See you in 2020. April, hashtag Fast Family, right? Nah, it's about hashtag Team Dwayne. Hashtag three years. Will it be worth the wait? Hashtag no Shaw, just Hobbs. Will this be another hashtag Baywatch? Guys, guys, just relax. I'm just a passionate film critic. Following Gibson's comments, Fast and Furious franchise star Vin Diesel also shared his thoughts on Instagram concerning the delay writing. It would be unfair to say it is anyone's fault. Sylvester Stallone announced on Instagram Monday that he will be directing and producing boxing sequel Creed 2, starring himself and Michael B. Jordan. Stallone wrote alongside a photo of himself and Jordan, looking forward to directing and producing the incredibly talented Michael B. Jordan in Creed 2 next year. The actor continued, one more round, hashtag Creed 2, hashtag MGM, hashtag fighting, hashtag workout, hashtag exercise, hashtag boxing. Creed, released in November 2015, centered around Adonis Creed played by Jordan, the son of Rocky series 
series regular Apollo Creed, who enters the boxing world by training with Stallone, who reprised his role as Rocky Balboa. The film from director Ryan Coogler, based on the script he co-wrote with Aaron Covington, earned $173 million worldwide. Stallone was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor and won the Golden Globe in the same category for his return as Rocky. Previously, Stallone wrote the screenplays for all six Rocky films and directed Rocky II, Rocky III, and Rocky IV, which featured the death of Apollo at the hands of boxer Ivan Drago and Rocky Balboa. Stallone and Duff Lundgren, who portrayed Drago, previously hinted on social media that the character will be returning in Creed II. Laura Annette and Kristen Bell have signed on to star in Warner Brothers' upcoming Teen Titans Go animated film. The film titled Teen, uh, Teen Titans Go to the Movies is based on the Cartoon Network series of the same name that follows a group of DC superheroes and their wacky adventures. Arnett and Bell will join the film alongside the voice cast from the show, including Greg Clips as Beast Boy, Scott Menville as Robin, Carrie Payton as Cyborg, Tara Strong as Raven, and Hayden Walsh as Starfire. Arnett and Bell's roles have yet to be announced. Teen Titans Go to the Movies will be directed by Aaron Horvath and Peter Rita Michael from a screenplay by Michael Jeninick and Horvath. Arnett is producing the project alongside with Michael and Peggy Regan. Sam Register, Janelic, and Horvath are executive producers, making Arnett the only producer who has not worked on the animated series, Variety reported. Arnett and Bell unveiled was first uh, involvement was first Unveiled Monday on Twitter as DC released a short teaser video for the film that lists off the voice cast. Teen Titans heroes Robin, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Cyborg are seen sitting on the Hollywood sign in the clip. Actresses Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie said they were sexually harassed by Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. Former actress Louisette Geis followed Paltrow and Jolie's claims Tuesday, holding a news conference in Los Angeles to say Weinstein had harassed her, too. Guys said at the Sundance Film Festival in 2008, Weinstein asked her to his office next to his hotel room where he changed into a bathrobe, entered a hot tub, and asked her to watch him masturbate. Guys was trying to pitch him a screenplay. She said she only entered the office under an agreement that Weinstein wouldn't touch her. Guys says, I do not think that Harvey Weinstein understands or comprehends how much pain and suffering this brings to me and scores of other women. In an article published early Tuesday, Paltrow told the New York times Weinstein placed his hands on her and tried to lead her into the bedroom for a massage after a meeting in a hotel room where she was cast as the lead in the Jane Austen adaptation Emma at the age of 22. She says I was a kid I was signed up I was petrified. Patrick told Brad Pitt, her boyfriend at the time, about the sexual advances, and the actor confronted Weinstein, who in turn threatened Paltrow to not tell anyone else about the harassment. She said, I thought he was going to fire me. He screamed at me for a long time. It was brutal. Paltrow, who became known as the First Lady of Miramax, says she was expected to keep the secret of Weinstein's harassment for many years, but felt it was time to support the women who had already come forward by sharing her experience. She says, we're at a point in time when women need to send a clear message that this is over. This way of treating women ends now. Jolie shared a similar story of unwanted sexual advances from Weinstein during the release of Play by Heart in 1998. She says, I had a bad experience with Harvey Weinstein in my youth and as a result chose never to work with him again and warn others when they did. This behavior towards women is unacceptable and any country is unacceptable. Former U.S. Sec uh, Senator and First Lady Hi Hillary Ron Clinton released a statement regarding the allegations against Weinstein, who contributed to her 2016 presidential campaign. Clinton says, I was shocked and appalled by the revelations about Harvey Weinstein. The behavior described by women coming forward cannot be tolerated. Their courage and the support of others is critical in helping stop this kind of behavior. Paltrow and Jolie shared their stories after three women came forward in a new report stating that Weinstein raped them. The report by Ronan Farrow and published in The New Yorker features Italian actress and director Asia Argento saying that Weinstein 20 years ago forcibly performed oral sex on her. Lucia Evans a, and a third woman also shared their stories of rape, along with four other women who told the publication that the producer touched them inappropriately. The piece also mentions that 13 women said they were sexually harassed and assaulted by Weinstein, with 16 former and current executives sharing that they had seen or know about the reports of Weinstein's sexual advances. 
While well, Sinas denied the accusation, stating that through his spokesperson Sally Hoffmeister, any allegations of non consexual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein has further com- confirmed that there were never any acts of retaliation against any women for refusing his advancements. Mr. Weinstein obviously can't speak to anonymous allegations, but with respect to any women who have made allegations on the record, Mr. Weinstein believes that all of these relationships were consensual. Mr. Weinstein has begun counseling, has listened to the community, and is pursuing a better path. Mr. Weinstein is hoping that if he makes enough progress, he will be given a second chance. The New Yorker piece comes after Weinstein was fired from the production company he founded, the Weinstein Corporation, due to reports that he sexually harassed several women. Information of Weinstein first came in light in a New York Times piece that featured actresses Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan, who shared their stories concerning Weinstein's behavior towards them. Uh, Meryl Streep, who has worked with Weinstein in the past, says recently before calling his behavior inexcusable, the disgraceful news about Harvey Weinstein has appalled those of us who worked he championed and those who good and worthy cause he supported. The intemperate women who raised their voices to expose his abuse are our heroes. And a related story, fashion designer Georgina Chapman has announced she's leaving her husband, Harvey Weinstein, after 10 years of marriage. Weinstein and Chapman have two children, India Pearl, who's seven, and Dashiell Max Robert, who's four. Uh, Chapman said in a statement to People magazine, My heart breaks for all the women who have suffered tremendous pain because of these unforgivable actions. I have chose to leave my husband. Caring for my young children is my first priority, and I ask the media for privacy at this time. Us Weekly said the split was announced less than a week after the New York Times published a scathing report claiming Weinstein sexually harassed and assaulted numerous women over the last three decades. He was fired from the Weinstein Company, which he co-founded with his brother Bob during the weekend. Many high-profile celebrities, including George Clooney, Meryl Streep, and Hillary, Hillary Clinton, have since denounced him for his alleged actions. Norman Reedus and his co-stars from The Walking Dead head to Washington on, on Wednesday with props from the zombie apocalypse drama to be in shrine at the Smithsonian. Reedus said in a Facebook post, Herschel's head for the Smithsonian. What an honor to meet you guys in D.C. The message accompanied a photo of the actor wearing a black suit and tie and holding up the disembodied head of moral compass Herschel Green, who was played by Scott Wilson from 2011 to 2014. Herschel was killed by the villain, the governor, played by David Morrissey in season four. The museum also accepts as artifacts Daryl's crossbow, Michonne's katana blade, Carl's costume from the first two seasons, and Merle's weaponized arm rig. Reedus played Daryl, Danny Guerrero plays Michonne, Chandler Riggs plays Carl, and Michael Rooker plays the late Merle. Um, uh, Eric Jensen, the arts and, and culture curator at the museum, said in a statement, These items from one of the most watched shows in cable television history represents America's fascination with horror as a genre that has crossed into mainstream family viewing. Season 8 of the show is scheduled to begin on AMC on October 22nd. It will be the 100th episode of The Walking Dead. A traveling exhibition featuring set pieces, costumes, and props from the British period drama Downtown Abbey will soon be debuted in the United States. Uh, The show's social media account said Tuesday, first stop New York City, join the family and immerse yourself in your favorite show like never before, experience the history, lavish costumes, iconic sets, and never seen before content. For tickets and to learn more, visit downtownexhibition.com. The hashtag downtown exhibition. The exhibition will be opening at 218 West 57th Street in New York on November 18th. Created by Julian Fellows, the series ran for six seasons from 2010 to 2015 on ITV in the United Kingdom and PBS in the United States. It follows a wealthy family and the staff who served them at their country estate during the early 20th century. The cast includes Michelle, uh, included Michelle Dockery, Dan Stevens, Hugh Bonneville, Maggie Smith, Phyllis Logan, Tom Cullen, Sophia McShira, Joanna Fagra, Alan Leach, Jim Carter, Brenda Coyle, and Elizabeth McGovern. CBS has ordered a second season of Ransom, its hostage negotiator drama starring Luke Roberts. The show's next 13 episodes will be filmed in Hungary and are set to premiere next year. Co-starring Sarah Green, Brandon J. McLaren, and Naziri Contractor, the series follows Robert Eric Biomond, whose team is brought in to save lives when no one else can, a network press release says. 
AT&T Audience Network says it has renewed its serial killer drama, Mr. Mercedes, for a second season. The show's Twitter feed says Tuesday the season finale of Hashtag Mr. Mercedes TV is tomorrow, 8 p.m. on at Audience Network, but it's not over yet. Season 2 is coming soon. The series is adapted from a story by Stephen King. Season 1 stars Harry Treadway, Brendan Gleeson, Mary Louise Parker, and Holland Taylor. Deadline.com says David E. Kelly returned to write the 10-episode second season with Jack Bender directing. The Bachelor star Nick Vile is set to make a guest appearance on ABC's scripted comedy series Speechless. The former Bachelor will return to the network in a November episode of the half-hour comedy series starring many drivers Maya, the mother of a teen with cerebral palsy named JJ, played by Mechem Fowler, Deadline reported. Um, Vile will play an overly serious B-movie actor who meets J.J. on the film set and helps him get out of trouble by deceiving Maya and her husband, Jimmy, played by John Ross Bowie, E-News report. Vile appeared on two seasons of The Bachelorette and a season of Bachelor in Paradise before returning as the star of season 21 of The Bachelor. He also competed on a season of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Speechless airs Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. on ABC. My Baby Sister's a Vampire Riverdale star Vanessa Morgan says she underwent intense physical training for her role as a warrior princess in Season 2 of Spike's fantasy drama The Shannara Chronicles. The 25-year-old Canadian actress told reporters at New York's Comic-Con Saturday, I've never done a project where we had one month of training, sword fighting, horseback riding. There were some weekends where I was just so drained I would just sleep the whole time, but then I was happy with the results because those times when I did have to grab a sword, I looked competent and And my body was in good shape. Morgan says she was sadly going to miss a planned scenario screening party with the show's cast and creative team because she was due back on the Riverdale set this week in Vancouver. Asked by UPI how she switched gears and goes from a magical epic to a contemporary young adult drama, she replied as an actor, I think that is kind of a dream. I've gone through where you are sitting for a year straight, not working and wanting to give up and having that call with your mom. So the fact that I have two good shows coming out this month is good. Based on the books by Terry Brooks and filmed on location in New Zealand, Shannara stars Austin Butler, uh, Ivana Baccaro, Manu Bennett, Aaron uh, Jack, uh, Jacku Becko and Marcus Vanko, along with news cast members Melise Joe, Gentry White, Caroline Cheesy, and Damian Chiyo. Spike explained in the press release, season two takes place one year after the events of last season. The, land, the four lands are in chaos. The reemergence of magic has the populace terrified, and an organization called the Crimson is hunting down magic users using fear and intimidation to sow discord among the races. Will, scarred by the loss of Amberline and his separation from Ethereum, has turned his back on a magical destiny to become a healer. But when a mysterious woman named Merif saves Will from a crimson attack, he is forced to rejoin the fight. Season 2 of the Shannara Chronicles debuts Wednesday on Spike TV. Jesse James Decker announced on Instagram Monday that she is pregnant with her third child with husband Eric Decker. The singer wrote alongside a video of herself and Eric delivering the news to their three-year-old daughter Vivian as their two-year-old son Eric Jr. looks on. Eric and I are so happy to share with you that we're expecting baby Decker number three. Um, Jesse James continued, as you can see, Viv is so happy and Bub doesn't quite know what's going on, but we are over the moon and feel so blessed and can't wait to meet this little one end of, of March. The clip notably features Vivian clapping her hands and kicking her feet after learning that she will be joined by a baby brother or baby sister. Jesse James and Eric, an NFL star, tied the knot in June 2013. The couple starred together on reality show Eric and Jesse, which recently returned for a third season in September. Korean-American actor John Cho says one of the reasons he joined the cast of The Exorcist for season two is because he wanted to put an Asian face in American horror. Cho told reporters at the New York Comic Con Sunday, I wasn't a big horror fan, I was curious about it, but they really attracted me with the character. He says, on a macro level, I was pretty intense in putting an Asian face in American horror because American horror has been very white and has trafficked in these wasp fantasy, almost white picket fence, and so what is... It says to me is this is America. This is the precious America. And this is what is in its peril. And I like messing with that with my face and thought it would be interesting, particularly since there is 
all this great horror out of Asia, but American horror remains very monochromatic. Co-starring Ben Daniels and Alfonso Herrera, season two of The Exorcist airs on Friday nights on Fox. It follows a pair of especially gifted Catholic priests who save people possessed by demons. Cho played the kind-hearted patriarch of a foster family rocked by su- supernatural forces. The actor is best known for his work in the Harold Kumar series, American Pie and Star Trek films, as well as the TV series Flash Forward, Sleepy Hollow, and Difficult People. And finally... Eminem tore into President Donald Trump in a freestyle rap that aired on Tuesday night's BET Hip Hop Awards. In a taped segment, apparently filmed Friday in downtown Detroit parking garage, the rapper described the president as a kamikaze that's probably causing a nuclear holocaust, complete with a handful of references bleep for the television audience. Eminem warmed off any fan of mine who's a supporter of Trump. Flanked by a crew that included fellow Detroiters Royce Del 5'9 and Kid Vicious, Eminem also declared himself a supporter of football's Colin Kaepernick, whose national anthem protests have spread across the NFL and dropped criticism from Trump on Twitter, which the rapper called a distraction from Hurricane Bad of Puerto Rico and other issues. Um, as one point, he took on Trump's vows to lower taxes. Then he's going to pay back for his extravagant trips back and forth with his family, his golf resorts and mansions, same shit that he tormented Hillary for and he slandered. Then it does it more from his endorsement of Bannon, support for the Klansmen, tiki tortures in hands for the soldiers that's black and come back from home from Iraq and is still told to go back to Africa. The tirade follows last fall's campaign speech, a lengthy track that includes lines against Trump, then the Republican candidate. The Detroit rapper also led U.S. Uh, U.K. audiences last month in an anti-Trump chant. And as your entertainment report for Wednesday, October 11th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the answer report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.